I'm, uh, I'm super excited to, uh, to be back in this position and to be in this club. It's, it's a club that I have, you know, laid my heart and soul on, on the field for as a player. Uh, and now I'm looking forward to doing so as, as the manager and coach of, of this team. Um, I'm excited to, to work with, with Chris and Dennis and, and the rest of the staff and front office to, to build our roster and to develop our, our culture and the way we're going to be working on a daily basis with, with the players and getting to know them uh, and creating the expectations that, that we will have as an organization, as a team, as we move forward you know, developing our, our principles of play and style of play and, and getting everybody on the same page. So uh, the work is uh, just beginning. There's a, it's a long process and I'm a process oriented coach uh, and the outcomes that we're seeking are, are only feasible and uh, realistic if we come to work every single day and we, and we build upon one day after the other and, um, and do the work. Uh, otherwise, we're just spouting off uh, dreams and hopes, but it's it's about the work that we're going to put in and and getting everybody on the same page, which is mission number one. The second uh, the players get in, and we're already working on that behind the scenes now. So uh, I'm excited to be back uh, back in the saddle and and looking forward to things to come. Thanks, Greg. We're going to go ahead and move into questions. We'll start first with a question from Dylan Hernandez. Go ahead, Dylan. Hi, Greg. Um, you know, I know in your time in Toronto, we saw you have like a lot of tactical flexibility, but you know, the one constant did seem to be the fact that like you like to play, you know, the ball out of the back, kind of having possession and stuff. Uh, do A, can we, you know, should we expect to kind of see that style of play here? And B, um, how important do you think is it to kind of have uh, to develop a gen general like philosophy about a style when you, when you talk about building the culture of a club? Uh, to answer the last question first, I think it's imperative that you that we define right away what our style of play is, what our vision for our game model is, and so that that we all have clarity and understanding uh, as players, as a as a staff, as a front office too, because it determines what players we go get and bring in. They have to fit in to our style of play and and the roles that we want them to play on the field, and the characteristics have to fit together uh, of our players. So we have that's one of one of the first steps is defining that along with defining the culture and the personalities and the type of people that we want in, in our organization and in our team. Um, in terms of the way I see the game is, is we first and foremost, we want to have the ball. We, we want to play with the ball, not on the defensive side. Ideally, we, we want to be in possession. Obviously, um, we want to be aggressive in an attacking oriented way. That's the way we always did it in Toronto. And it's the way I see the game. Uh, the, on the defending side, we have to be good. We cannot just concede goals. We want to be aggressive in how we defend as well. It's about proactivity uh, and not reactivity from the way I see it. Um, for me, the game is, is also defined by principles of play. You might hear about some of this stuff as I go. I don't want to get into too many details and all of that. Uh, systems are a framework, but the principles are actually how players make decisions and they actually define what we're trying to do. And so getting our players in and starting to teach them what the principles are for us and, and different coaches can have different principles, but what our principles are and getting them to understand them will be the building blocks for us to build our style of play and to get on the same page together in terms of what we're trying to achieve and what our objectives are within the match. The framework and, and the system and all that, the 4-3-3, 3-5-2, the different things that are out there are just our structure. I like flexibility in that, but I probably won't bring a lot of flexibility initially until our players get comfortable with what it is that, that we're trying to do and what our framework is. And over time, as they become more comfortable and more flexible, then we may see some different things. But uh, first and foremost, we have to lay down a foundation and groundwork and, uh, and we'll build off of that. Thank you. Thanks, we'll go next to a question from Damian Calhoun with the LA Daily News Group. Damian? Hey, Greg, how you doing? I'm well, thank you, Damian. Uh, there's been a lot of talk about, you know, Galaxy rebuilding the culture of the past. Um, how do you go about doing that? I mean, there's so many, you know, last couple of years, so many new guys coming in. Um, then, you got, then you have the younger guys coming up through the academy system. How do you go about building that? And also, have you, I mean, how much, how much thought have you thought, how much time have you looked at the roster yet and what areas do you think this team really needs to strengthen? Um, as you know, as the draft comes forward and free agency is already you know kicked in. Yeah, I appreciate the question. Um, 
You know, in terms of, of culture, uh, that, that for me is, is established on how you work on a daily basis uh, as a group. It's the expectations we create the, once the guys walk in the door every single morning to put in the work to, uh, for us, it's, a, it's in my, the team of guys that I have working with me and the staff and what we're trying to build in our various departments is uh, we're trying to build a team that can collaborate on the field, but, but it's also very individualized and in trying to get team, each player to perform at their highest level within the collective vision of what we're trying to do as a team. So when guys walk in the door, they have things that they're going to be working on from the second they arrive to the second they leave. And, and we have a humility, uh, character, discipline, um, a lot of important factors into that. Our legacy means nothing to our future if, if we don't show up and work every single day and, and try to build up. We can't just talk about the five championships that we won. It's about what we do today to prepare for the game on the weekend, to try to get a result and, and then build off of a season and so forth. And so that takes humility, it takes foresight, takes um, some planning and direction, and it takes buy-in. And so, you know, we, we are looking for players who want to be here for the right reasons and the right reasons that they're going to buy into the process of, of the work that's going to happen every single day so that we can approach every game with the opportunity and possibility to get a result. And then we need to execute. And so um, that's what it, that for me is what the culture is going to be about. It's about hard work. It's not about the past. It's about the present and it's about what we're building towards in the future, but we always will respect the legacy of this club. And I think it's our responsibility to try to build off of that. You know, that legacy exists for those players on this club. And now what can we as a, as a working group do to add to that? And that, that starts with day one that we're, we're in business. And so have I looked at the roster? I have. I've looked at it closely. I, um, you know, I've looked at the pieces. Uh, the, the guys here have done a great job of creating a lot of flexibility within the roster to allow us to build and, and put some new pieces together. Uh, the way that I'm looking at a roster is, is – in this league under the salary cap is that, that we have players with special qualities uh, that do special things and do things different. And then we try to tie those qualities together in, in a relationship. So we don't want a bunch of players who look the same. They need to bring their unique qualities and personalities to our team. And then we fit those together into a, into a cohesive unit. And that's my job is to get these guys on the same page. But uh, so we're, we're out looking for, the players who fit the roles and the responsibilities and expectations we have within our, within our principles and within our system. Uh, and then we'll bring them in. And like I said, we want to be dynamic. We want to, uh, we want to be attacking minded with a, with an idea of having the ball. Um, but we also want responsible players willing to work both ways. Um, and so we have, we have a lot of work to do. And as Dennis mentioned, it's not the easiest of times to do roster building because it's not like you can get out and, uh, and around the world to sit down and watch games and meet with players. Uh, but through our contacts uh, and relationships and, and through the various means that we have at our disposal, that work is beginning and it's underway already. We're going to go next to a question from Alicia Rodriguez with SB Nation. Alicia, go ahead. Thank you. Uh, Greg, congratulations on your appointment. I wanted Thank to um, kind of piggyback off, off your last answer and ask you specifically, um, what parts of the, the current roster uh, do you like and, and what areas of, of uh, the squad would you like to bolster, upgrade, um, you know, a, ahead of the, the new season? I think there, you know, there's a lot of pieces to like. I think, you know, one thing that's important, and it, again, is my responsibility, is to get the most out of the players that we have here uh, and to get, to get those guys um, on the right page with, with the rest of us, with our style of play and, and build off of those guys. Um, you know, we have great pieces here with Javier and uh, Jonathan and multiple guys that, that um, whose names I can't list all right now. So there's a lot of building blocks uh, that are in place, but at the same time, we've got to get complementary pieces for them. Uh, obviously Christian is one of those players we would love to, to get back. He, he brings a lot to this team. So, um, that's one piece. Uh, we want to continue to to build in in terms of our relationships on the attacking side. Getting a you know looking another at another right winger for example, something else to add to our midfield. That on the attacking side. But one of the most important things you know for me is that we provide we build more stability in in the defending half of the field and and the, on the defending side. That means from front to back we defend better as a team, which is how we can work in the training field and how we're going to 
to work as, as a group, but also continuing to improve in, in terms of uh, getting the most out of the guys we have, but maybe adding another piece or two to the defensive side that can help us goalkeeper position to help us to be more solid on the defensive side. There's, you know, there's nothing more challenging than being a great attacking team and then conceding a lot of goals. So it's, it's making sure that, that we have balance. Uh, we have to have the foundation on the defensive side to support what we want to do on the attacking side. So there's pieces all around that we are, um, that we're looking at and trying to pull together. Uh, but again, the first and most important thing is that we got, we have guys on our roster who I think have more to give to us than maybe they've been able to give in the short term. We need to bring that out of them as well. And, um, and I look forward to just getting to know those guys and, and getting to getting to work with them and, and understanding what motivates them and, and bringing our system and style that I think that they'll appreciate and enjoy and, and really get, get excited about. We're going to go next to a question from Josh Gessman with Corner of the Galaxy podcast. Jeff, Josh, go ahead. All right, thanks. Uh, thanks, Greg. Uh, congratulations. Um, thanks, the, the big question, obviously, we talk about, um, you know, the legacy uh, of the LA Galaxy, and, and you're part of that LA Galaxy legacy. In fact, a, a very big part, six Thank all-time you. games played. Um, how important, or, or maybe you can share with us a little bit about what that means to you to be back at this club, not as a player, but now as a coach. I mean, the last time you were on the field for the LA Galaxy, I think it was a one-minute appearance, um, and you were done, and now you're going to be the, the head coach for that. Can you share a little bit about that? Yeah, you know, I, I think – what it means to be a part of the galaxy. It's, it's a championship mentality. It's, it's, uh, <clears throat> and you can get that at, at a lot of organizations around, but it, it's what it means to, to show up to, to work every single day, singularly focused on your job and uh, your mission to improve yourself and to improve others around you, uh, to do that with humility, to do that with discipline, with open-mindedness, um, and to do that with determination. And so, um, you know, when, the old days of when I was a part of the Galaxy the first time, we, we trained at the parking lot outside of the Rose Bowl where the grass is and there was, there, was, uh, there was glass and we would walk around as a team and pick up the glass and put it in the garbage. There's manhole covers on the field and you know, somehow we managed to get to three championships playing in, in, in circumstances like that, right? We trained in a, in a baseball field outside of the Rose Bowl across the way, which didn't even give us the full dimensions of a field. but. So it, it's really about mentality and the work that you do and being purposeful every day and, and how you approach things and, and not looking for problems, but finding solutions and, uh, and being willing to go the extra mile for under any circumstances, whether that be the game or training to, to try to improve and having that mentality is what it means to me to be a part of the galaxy. That's the group of players that we had that got there then. Uh, and, and the championships they won thereafter was off of that mindset, was finding out how do we make each other better and how do we find the best in each other every single day, um, regardless of the circumstances. And there are no excuses. You know, you, you have to get it done. And, and um, that's the mentality we, we want to bring. Uh, and so, uh, again, it takes, it takes uh, buy-in from the players. But I think when they're excited about the, the style and when the culture – from the staff and the front office and everything around them exudes that type of mentality, then the players pick up on it. I've seen it happen. Uh, you know, obviously I don't want to speak too much about Toronto, but Toronto was a team that really struggled prior, you know, prior to our arrival there, we changed the culture. We got to a, a point where we lived last season away from home in, in Hartford, Connecticut, and not the greatest of circumstances and still competed for a, a supporter shield, you know, so, we need our players to be willing to adapt to circumstances and to find ways to get results and to win. And uh, that's what we're demanding of them. I, I think this group is hungry for that. Uh, I think uh, that's what anybody wants, no matter what professional you're talking about, whether they're at the top of their game or they're just starting out, they want to feel like they're a part of something that can be great. And they want to understand very clearly how they can contribute to that greatness. And every player wants to get better and every player wants to win. And then you have to create the framework of which they understand how they can get better and how they're going to win and how they need each other to do so. And that's a long winded answer to where we're, where we're trying to get to. And there's a lot of work that goes into those words every single day that we have to start immediately if we want to get there. Thanks Greg. Yep. We're next to a question from Jeff Reuter with the athletic Jeff, go ahead. 
Hi, Greg. Congratulations again. I was just wondering, the press release said that there will be updates about your coaching staff at a future time, but do you have any sort of sense of either the future of former staff members like Don Kinnear, whether or not they'll be part of the organization, and what you will be looking for as you build your staff? Yeah, our, the staff building is is definitely underway. Um, there'll be some for, some familiar faces with with me. I am a part of what I believe is a team of people who have a similar mindset to me that help to establish, uh, along with myself and Dennis and Chris, that will help to establish the culture here within within the organization. Um, and so that the staff building is is underway. I don't have any formal announcements right now. I haven't been able to sit down and really speak with Dom in particular yet. He's a guy I've known for ages and I have the utmost respect for him as a person and as a coach. Um, that's something that hopefully will take place here shortly. I've not been in town for so terribly long to, to be able to do it and several things have been going on the last little bit. So. But I look, I look forward to, to doing that. I don't have a great, I don't have a specific answer for that right now until those conversations take place. But um, again, that's, that's all underway and it's, it's work in progress. We'll go next to a question uh, from Arch Bell with Marka. Arch, go ahead. Thank you so much for your time, Greg. Uh, what do you see as Chicharito Hernandez's greatest strengths, and how can you get the best out of Chicharito this coming season? I think he is a world-class goal scorer, a guy who understands how to put the ball in the, in the back of the net, who is very clever about his movements in the box to find little windows and space and uh, and, and just get himself unmarked and, and finding ways to put the ball in the goal. Plus his, his finishing ability is off the, off the charts. And so for us, what's important to, is to help him by having a clear way of how we want to create chances, uh, how, what we're trying to do on the attacking side, because a forward like that reads off of what's going on around him in order for him to then organize the spaces that he needs to finish in. And so if it's very random, then it's very difficult for a player like him to understand the timing, the movements, and everything that he needs in order to, to be the finisher that he is. He's not a guy that's going to dribble past five guys and score a goal and those, those kinds of things. He's a, he's a box striker who can score goals in this league. We meet, need to make sure that the structure of what we're doing creates the types of chances and the predictability that he needs so that he can be the master that he is and what he does. And so uh, that means it's a team concept of which – of which that he can he can be the the guy that finishes it all off for us. So um, I'm excited about that. I think the way I look at the game and the way we want to create our attacks suits a player like him really well. And uh, I think he has every opportunity to be very successful this year. So getting getting him in, and I, I personally I just want to get to know him uh, and and get the right way for him to work to make sure that he's prepared. He's not a young guy who, who he understands who he is. He understands what he needs to be successful. We need to collaborate together to, to, to get him to the right spot so that he can be the best version that he is and for our team. Thank you. Thanks. We'll go next to Scott French. Scott, go ahead. Hey, Greg. Welcome back. Scott, long time no see. How are you? I'm doing well, thank you. Um, I've got a uh, a nice multi-part question for you. Um, of course, you've of talked <laughs> you have talked about um, that you like to build things, and I'm wondering what do you see as being unique challenges of this build, um, and uh, and also what uh, what kind of relationship will you and Dennis have in terms of making player personnel decisions? And at what point do you start thinking about this job? Yeah, I mean, I, I think I've already started thinking about the job. So that, no, that's, no, I mean, uh, in terms of taking the job. Oh, when did I start thinking about it? Okay, I'll get to that last then. Uh, okay. So in, uh, in terms of the building, for, for me, it's a, obviously a club that is used to being on, on top in the past and has built a legacy of, uh, that has defined our league in, in many ways and has set the standard in the league for what quality is, is like. And many teams who have come into the league and have participated in this league have always sought to be more like the Galaxy in some way, shape, or form. For me, the build is getting back to there. How can the Galaxy, LA Galaxy be a standard bearer for our league and push, uh, push the level of, of all things? When I, when I look at an opportunity and a club, 
I don't just think about the first team. I think the entire project has to fit together. You know, our, our development side and working with Dennis and, and all the people on that side and supporting what they're doing on the development side at the first team is an important part of this project and making sure that we create pathways for the great young players that we have coming through. Finding the best DPs, working with Dennis and their team on the scouting side of things of finding that. Uh, building that culture and that work that work ethic and the support science department and all those different aspects for me that there are all these different dots that are out there and how we can become most efficient and then put those together to create the best club we can. That's the project that, that I love to be a part of. And uh, I think this is a space where Dennis is relatively new to being at this club as well, where we can collaborate together. We share a lot of the same vision on, on things in terms of player development and where we're headed. So I really look forward to, to getting to work with him on, on trying to bring many of those things to life. And so uh, that's to me what the, what the project is about. Ultimately it ends up on, and, and what is assessed by is how the first team performs and getting results and trying to be a championship caliber team. But you can't do that without the foundation being in place to support that activity and that progression. And that's, that's the build that, uh, that I'm excited about. When did I start thinking about this job? It was, <clears throat> I took a, um, obviously a, a step back after what was an incredible season uh, and time period in, in Toronto in which um, I'm not a person who, who um, spends a lot of time thinking about the past. I'm, I'm always trying to chart a path forward to what the next success is, but I, I really wanted to, as I was looking at the project and having coming off of a season that was very challenging with the galaxy, being away from family, being away from home, being uh, on the road so much time um, after the announcement. And I knew having thought through the process at Toronto that my time there was going to be coming to an end. I just needed a little time to reflect, to talk to my family, to, to think about um, what we had, what we had really processed and, and endured and, and enjoyed um, in our time in Toronto, and and uh, I took a minute to reflect and and think about what is it that I really want to do next, and when do I want to do that? I was not in a major rush to have to jump into a position. I obviously knew that the Galaxy was in a coaching search and and that the position was open, but um, I didn't know if they would have any interest in me or not. The question for me was more around. Um, was this the right time? Because timing is everything in this sport. Was this the right time to take on a new job for me personally? Was this the right time for me to go to LA or any other club? And, and that became the process. So um, what people know about me is I am, I am, I don't rest and sit still for very long. I am a obsessive worker and I'm an obsessive dreamer and vision type of person. So it took me a couple of weeks, I think, to really process and get to a position where um, I know Dennis and Chris reached out to the Galaxy, or sorry, to, to Toronto for the opportunity to speak to me. That even took a little bit of time. Um, and then we finally sat down and really talked about the project. So um, it took a little bit of time of processing. Uh, and I need to think through everything and assess everything. And, and here we are today. And I couldn't be more excited about the decision we made for myself, for my family. They're excited to be coming back to LA and more, I couldn't be more appreciative of the time in Toronto that I had and the people that I worked with and the people that I got to know. I think you saw when, uh, after I, I spoke and, and announced my, um, my, that I wasn't going to be resigning and continuing there. Um, I made a lot of friends there and, and a lot of people that I have a lot of respect for. Um, and still to this day from Larry Tannenbaum and the board to, you know, to Bill and Ali and Tim Bezbachenko and, and Tim Iwicki. There were many people I had so much respect for, but now is, is the opportunity for something new. And I'm excited about, about this opportunity. Well, thank you, Greg. Yep, thanks, Scott. Thanks, Scott. We have time for one last question. We're gonna to go to with Joshua Cloak with The Athletic. Joshua, go ahead. Well, there's a familiar face, huh, Josh? I, I feel like I, I, Neil should be going. You can find me. me anywhere with this guy. Yeah, <laughs> across the border, they still let you in, huh? Right. Well, good to Absolutely. see you, John. I can't see you, but good to hear hear you. Well, you know, on that note, talking about Toronto, I'm just curious if there was one thing or or one event or something that happened in Toronto that you think you will really take to LA and that you can really learn from and apply to your time upcoming in LA. 
so difficult in a in a project that was that big and seven years long to choose one thing. Um, you know, the the thing that that I think is was most important was just was the humility and collaborative nature of all the people that that came into Toronto in the time that we're there and working together uh, for the common goal of putting the club first. And we were facilitators of the club to put the club in a better position. Uh, when we left it than it was when we got it. And that was singularly the most important thing for every single person that was involved in that project. For me, that is the one thing that I bring to this. The LA Galaxy and the crest and the badge is the most important thing in all of this. And we're all facilitators of that. And our job is to work together and collaborate and give every, every ounce of our energy and, and personality and humility to work together to come to the best uh, resolution to move forward to try to win championships, but to also try to build a club that is um, is great, sustainable, pushes the standard of the league, uh, and that people in this community can be proud of, and our fans can be proud of. And that that for me was uh, the thing that I probably enjoyed the most, and and take away the most. And I look forward to that process because to me, it's all about process, and it's about people. Um, I enjoy. I look forward to that process with this new group of people that I'll be working with. Um, to to push that ad, that agenda forward and that objective forward. And uh, I think we have some very good people, very smart people here. I look forward to working for them, uh, with them, um, to, again, put the club at the forefront and to try to take this club back up to the top where everybody is used to seeing it. And, and that's our objective.